Let's tackle now law of energy conservation. First, what is law of energy conservation? We have here the definition wherein energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can be transformed from one type to another. As you can see, these are the forms of energy. We have here the kinetic energy as well as the potential energy. We also discuss thermal, mechanical, electrical, and magnetic, as well as these different types of potential energy such as chemical energy, which is stored in the food, elastic energy, nuclear energy, and gravitational energy. So in terms of mechanical energy, we are considering motion for kinetic energy, and if it is a mechanical energy, we consider potential energy, which is the gravitational, elastic, and magnetic. And for internal or kinetic internal energy, which is in atomic size, these are the thermal, electrical, radiant, as well as the sound energy. And for, and for the potential, we have this nuclear, chemical, and electrical. Now, let's say for example, we have this uh, swinging motion. So, if I stop pumping while I'm swinging, there, there definitely I will stop. So, where's the energy? If it is being conserved. Remember, friction. As you slow down on the swing, the hooks and the chain rub against each other, and the air pushes against the rider. So definitely, as time passes, the swing will stop. So we have to consider two major types of forces before we go deep into energy. Remember that work is equal to force times displacement. So we have to consider types of forces. Basically, there are two types of force. We have the conservative force as well as the non-conservative force. A force is conservative when the work it does on an object is independent of the path between the object's initial and final position. A force is non-conservative when the work it does on a moving object is dependent of the path between the object's initial and final position. Example of conservative forces are first gravitational force, we have the elastic or spring force, and we have the electrical force. For the non-conservative force, we have the static and kinetic frictional forces, the air resistance, tension, as well as the normal force. We have to take note that the gravitational force has an interesting property that when an object is moved from one place to another, the work done by the gravitational force does not depend on the choice of path. Let's try to analyze this picture for energy conservation. We have to take note that the total energy before equals to total energy after. Or we can say that initial energies is equals to final energy. Let's say, for example, this man will drop a ball into the ground. So we have here the initial energy. And considering the final energy, for the initial energy, we have only this gravitational potential energy. Take note that there's no kinetic energy since there's no movement. But when the, that ball <coughs> reaches the ground, we have to consider kinetic energy only, just before it hits the ground. No gravitational potential energy since height is zero, and we will consider sound energy and little amount of heat energy. We can say that the initial energies are potential energy, and for the final energy we have kinetic energy plus sound energy plus heat energy. Let's try to analyze this uh, diagram. Say for example, this one is a cart moving on a roller coaster path. We have here initial energies equals to final energies. So what are the things considered in the initial as well as in the final energy? 
we have here the gravitation gravitational potential energy only since that part is not yet moving and for the path for point B since it is still height we have to consider gravitational potential energy therefore kinetic energy plus plus gravitational potential energy plus work due to friction we could also add sound energy and then therefore for this we have initial energies equals to final energies which is the working equation will be gravitational potential equals kinetic plus gravitational potential plus work friction plus sound energy if it is considered now how about on this diagram let's co let's consider all energy transformation from point one to point two we have the initial energy is equals to final energy. So the initial again equals to final. We have the gravitational potential energy. And for the final energy, we have here kinetic energy plus gravitational potential energy plus work friction plus sound energy. But take note for the gravitational and potential energy, it will be removed this part for the gravitational potential since there is no height. How about on this part? Since we're talking again, initial equals to final. And then therefore, we have this energy coming from the spring, which is known as the elastic potential energy. And we'll now consider the final energy, which is gravitational potential energy plus work friction plus sound energy take note that we remove the kinetic energy since on the final point the object is not moving so how about considering only the mechanical energy this is known as the conservation of mechanical energy <coughs> we have to disregard other non-conservative force Meaning to say, the total mechanical energy equals the potential energy plus kinetic energy. Therefore, we will now define this conservation of mechanical energy as the total mechanical energy, which is Ke plus Pe, of an object remains constant as the object moves, provided that the net work done by the external non-conservative force is zero. In other words, you have to disregard other energy that is non-conservative like friction and sound. Now, again, let's go back to our diagrams. If we will not consider the non-conservative form of energy, we only consider the gravitational potential at the top and kinetic un energy only at the final or at the bottom. So we have Pe equals Ke. Since the formula of potential energy is mgh and the kinetic energy is 1 half mv square, we'll have this formula. mgh equals to 1 half mv square. How about for, the for this diagram? Again, disregarding energy from non-conservative forces, we'll have this initial energy equals to final energy. And take note, for the initial energy, we only have the gravitational potential energy. And for this one, we have to disregard the friction. And then therefore, if we have to disregard the friction, we'll have only the potential energy initial equals to kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. And we have mgh1 equals to 1 half mv square plus mgh times height 2. So this will be our working formula. How about on this part? We have your initial energy is equals to final energy. Again, as you can see, we have here the initial or the elastic potential energy coming from the spring. And this is the formula for the elastic for uh, energy, elastic potential energy coming from the spring. We will still discuss this energy, but this is the formula 1 half kx squared. Since it is at rest on the top, we have here mgh. 
So this is the final formula, 1 of kx squared equals to mgh. Now, how about on this diagram for a simple pendulum? We have here from point A to point B. If air resistance and friction is not considered, it will swing forever. So let's consider point A up to point B. Take note on point A, it is not moving, no kinetic energy, assume zero velocity on maximum height, and at the final part, we have 1 half mv square, no potential energy, and we have to assume zero height. So from point A to point B, initial energy equals to final energy, which is potential equals kinetic energy. And therefore, mgh equals to 1 half mv square, canceling the mass on both sides. We could say that the final formula would be gravity times height equals to point v square. Now, you have an idea now on how to solve the velocity. So let's now work on our sample problems.